Now something that almost every game needs is a smooth way to transition from one scene to another. Whether you're just switching from a main menu to your game scene or changing between multiple different levels. Like this. Well, this doesn't feel right. I feel taller. Well, anyway. So in this video, we'll have a look at creating cool scene transitions that you can really get creative with. We'll start with a simple fade to black, and then once we have the core systems in place, we'll have a look at how you can create other cool transitions like a circle wipe, or even custom ones like this Brekkies one that I created. So let's get to it. But first, this video is sponsored by Hostinger. In the game development field, you often find yourself needing to set up a website. I once tried programming one from scratch and hosting it on my own, but oh boy is that a lot of work. This is why Hostinger is such a great solution for all your web hosting needs. They're extremely fast, very affordable, and just so easy to set everything up with. And not only is it extremely easy to set up, they also take care of all the backend for you. With Hostinger, you can set up your own domain, get VPS hosting, and they even offer cloud hosting plans. We've personally set up a website with them and everything just runs very smooth. And hosting is also fully optimized for WordPress. Get up to 91% off yearly web hosting plans using the code Brackies. Simply click the link in the description and get started. So with that, let's get transitioning. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and set up two example scenes. We have scene A, which is open here, and scene B. And both of these scenes are very, very simple. As you can see, all I have in here are just a few sprites and some text elements. Nothing fancy. And if we hit play, I've gone ahead and made these sprites bob up and down. And if we go ahead and change to scene B, we'll get an answer to this riddle. So what do you get if you combine a magic egg with some fire and a princess? Well, of course you get a dragon. And that's all we have inside scene B. It's just a sprite of a dragon and that's it. So we'll have a look at how to transition between these two scenes. You can of course have as many scenes in here as you'd like. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to the hierarchy and let's hit create empty and we'll rename this object to something like level loader. Let's also reset the transform on this and drag it to the top of the hierarchy so that we can always see it. And from here you can add different transitions. Let's start by creating a simple crossfade. So to do this, we'll first need some UI. So let's right click on a level loader, go on the UI and let's create a UI canvas. If we go into the scene view and hit F, we can see that we now have an empty canvas here where we can start adding UI elements. And the only thing that I want to configure about this canvas is I want to change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size, just to make sure that all of our UI elements scale appropriately. I'm also going to rename this to crossfade, just to stay organized. Now, of course, a fade is very, very simple. We're simply going to dip to black and then fade back in our new scene. And this only requires one element, which is a black color that fills our entire screen. So let's go ahead and create that now. Let's right click on a crossfade, go UI, and let's create an image. This gives us a white box in the center of our screen. Let's go ahead and fit that to the entire size of our screen. To do that, we'll click over here. While holding down Alt, we'll click in the bottom right corner and that is going to scale our image along with the angle points to fill our entire screen. This means that if we go ahead and resize our game view, this image is going to scale with it. Awesome. So now we can set the color to anything that we'd like. You can of course dip to white. I am going to go ahead and dip to black. And that is actually all of the UI elements that we need to create. We are actually ready to start animating. However, one thing that I see a lot of people do is animating the alpha of the color of the image. And that could of course work, but if you later want to go in and let's say change the color, you need to go in and change that for the animation as well, which is just not so handy. And if you want to add more elements in here, let's say you want to add some text that just says loading, well then you probably want to fade that as well. And just changing the alpha of the color is not going to do that. So instead on our image, let's hit add component and let's create a canvas group component. And what this does is that it allows us to change the alpha of an entire group of objects at once. So really, really cool. Now I'm just gonna remove the text object here and now we are ready to animate. So let's select our crossfade object. Let's open up our animation window. You can get that by going window, animation and selecting the animation window. And we want to create a new animator and animation clip. So we'll just go ahead and hit create here. Let's create a folder for this called animations. And in here we'll create the first animation, which will be crossfade 
underscore and we'll split each transition up into two parts. One for the start of the animation which plays at the end of our level and one for the end of the animation which plays at the start of the next level. So let's just create crossfade end first. So let's save that. And now if we hit this red record button, we can go ahead and create our animation. So I'm gonna go forward to about one second here. I'm then gonna select the image and here we can change the alpha to zero. That's going to add a keyframe here where our alpha is zero. And it's also automatically gonna create a keyframe at the start where our alpha is one. So now we are already fading out. So if we just play this, we can see that our black image is indeed fading out. And that's of course the end of our crossfade animation. Now I'm also just going to go in here and at the end of this animation, when our black element is completely invisible, I wanna go ahead and make it non-interactable and make sure that we don't block any raycasts. And this is just going to make sure that if we click on the screen, we're still going to register button clicks and all that stuff. And this invisible element won't get in the way of that. Awesome, and we can now select all of these keyframes and simply go ahead and create a new clip. And this is of course going to be a crossfade start. And here we can then paste these keyframes back in and let's simply reverse the order of these. So we'll take this here and bring it to the start and the other keyframes here and bring them to one second. And if we now play, we can see the reverse thing happening where we dip to black. Awesome. So the final thing that we need to do to these animations is make sure that they do not loop so that when we're transitioning, they won't just stand there playing over and over. To do that, we'll go under animations. Let's select the first one and under loop time, let's simply disable that. We'll do the same thing with our crossfade start. So now we have our two animation clips. Now we just need to define when we're going to play what animation. And we do that using animator controllers. As you can see, when we created our animation clips, it actually automatically created an animator controller as well. Let's go ahead and double click this to open it up in the animator window. And I'm simply going to dock that over here. And here we can see our two animation clips. One of them is going to be a bright orange. This is the default clip that is going to play at the start when we open up our level. And right now that is set to crossfade end, which is also what we want. We want to fade from black to showing our scene right when we start. However, if this is for some reason set wrong for you, you can always right click and hit set as layer default state on another clip in order to change to that instead. Of course, when our level then ends, we want to transition from our crossfade end to a crossfade start. So we'll right click on our crossfade end, hit make transition and click on our crossfade start. So now we've made a transition between the two, but we only want to do this transition if we trigger it. So let's go up here under parameters and let's add a trigger parameter. Let's call it start. And now if we select our animation transition, we can go ahead and add a condition here with the start trigger. So now we're only going to play our crossfade start if this start condition is triggered. And we can of course do that through code. We'll also remove any kind of transition time to make this instant. So let's disable has exit time and under settings, we'll set the transition duration to zero. And that way we'll instantly start playing the crossfade start animation. And that's actually all the setup that we need to do for our animations. At this point, we're ready to trigger them through a script. Of course, to do that, we need to make sure that both of our scenes are added to our build settings. So we'll go file, build settings. And in here you can see that I've gone ahead and added my two scenes. If they aren't in here for some reason, you can always just simply drag them in. I've also gone ahead and arranged them in the order that I'd like so that scene A is first and scene B is second. And to the right here, you can see the index of these scenes. This is called the build index and it's what we're going to use to through code transition from one scene to the other in the correct order. Now with that set up, we can select our level loader, hit add component, and let's go ahead and create a level loader script. Let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. And the first thing that I'm gonna do here is get rid of our start function. We won't be needing that. And instead, let's have a look at triggering this level change. So in your game, you probably want this to happen whenever the player kills a certain amount of enemies or reaches a certain point. But since this is just a quick example, we're just going to trigger this whenever we press a certain button. So inside of update, we can have some kind of if statement where we check for input dot, and I'm gonna use get mouse button down and just input the first mouse button. So whenever we click with our mouse, I want to go ahead and load 
the next level. And this is a function that we'll create now. So we'll create a public void and I'm making this public in case you want to call it from other scripts. For example, if you have some kind of final checkpoint that you need to reach, you can call this inside of that checkpoint script. Let's name it load next level. And in order to load a level, we want to be using, so using unity engine dot scene management. This will allow us to access the scene manager. So here we can go scene manager, and then we can simply type load scene. Here we can input any kind of scene name. For example, I could simply go scene B in order to load scene B or a build index such as zero or one. However, instead of changing this from every single level to level, let's just automate it by taking our current build index. So scene manager dot get active scene, the scene that is currently loaded dot build index. So we'll take the build index of that scene and just add one onto that. So if we're currently inside of scene A, which has a build index of zero, we'll get that scene, get that build index and add one in order to load scene B. And we can just keep going like that for as many scenes as we have. Very simple and quick. However, this is actually going to load the scene immediately. And we don't want to do that. We want to give time for our animation to play. So because we need to delay some code, we actually need to create a coroutine. And we've talked about coroutines many times on this channel. If you've never seen them before, the syntax is definitely a bit weird, but just stay with me and I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. So whenever we're creating a coroutine, we don't type void, we type I enumerator. We then follow it with our function name. So this is going to be something like load level. And here we're going to take in a level index as an argument. And here we want to do three things. First of all, we want to go ahead and play our animation. We then want to wait for that animation to stop playing. And finally, we want to load the scene. So step one here is very, very simple. All we need is a reference to our animator. So we'll create a public animator and let's just call it something like transition. This way we can reference different animators in order to have different transitions. And then down here where we play our animation, we simply go transition dot set trigger and we'll pass in our start trigger. This is the parameter that we created inside of our animator. And that should go ahead and play our animation. Then we want to wait for a certain amount of seconds. So we'll type yield, return, new, wait for seconds. Again, this is the weird syntax that I was talking about. All this does is that it pauses this coroutine for X amount of seconds before continuing on. And we can type in, let's say one second here, or we could go to the top and turn this into a variable so that we can adjust it in the inspector. So let's create a public float called transition time and set it to one by default. And then we can simply put that variable down here. Finally, to load the scene, we use scene manager dot load scene, just as I showed you up here. And we'll simply load the scene with the level index that was passed in. This way up here, we don't have to call load scene. Instead, what we'll do is call load level and then pass this right in. And because our load level function is a coroutine, we also need a tiny bit of extra syntax here. And that is whenever we start a coroutine, we need to call the start coroutine function. So we'll wrap this entire function call inside of start coroutine. And I need to type that correctly. There we go. And that is actually all of the code that we are going to need. And we are almost ready to hit play. The only thing that we need to do is take this level loader and turn it into a prefab. So let's drag it into our assets folder. And now it's prefab. And we can go into scene B and simply drag it in here as well to make sure that it is in both of our scenes. This level loader script needs to be in all scenes that you want to transition to and from. That's very important. We'll also just open up our level loader prefab here. And as you can see, we need to reference the animator. So I'll simply drag in our crossfade here. And I think that's all the preparation we need to do. If we now go to scene A and hit play, we can see that it immediately fades in. And if I now click my mouse, it's going to smoothly fade from one scene to another really cool. Of course, it's a bit annoying that right now it's overlaying our entire screen with black. So you can always go into the prefab here and just select the image and set the alpha to zero. And this way you can see what's going on in your scene uh, when you're not working on it. There we go. And you might think that was quite a bit of work just to get a simple fade going. However, we've now done the groundwork for creating 
all kinds of really cool transitions. So continuing from here is actually really easy. If we go into our level loader, we can really easily just duplicate this crossfade and let's create something else like a circle wipe. Let's disable our crossfade and instead go into our circle wipe here. Let's have a look in our scene view. Let's remove this image and instead let's add some kind of circle. So let's right click, go UI, image, and you can use any source image that you'd like here. I've just gone ahead and created a quick circle sprite. It's literally nothing but a circle. Let's hit state native size here in order to make it big. Let's just move it over here on the X. Let's change the color to a black and let's make a quick animation for this. So let's go create a new clip. Let's call this one circle wipe underscore. Let's do the start animation first. Let's hit record, go forward, say one second, and then simply move this circle over. In fact, let's just snap it to the center here. This way we are kind of animating it in and let's just copy these keyframes. Go ahead and create a new clip, which is going to be circle wipe end, paste them and simply reverse them. And instead of having the circle go back here, let's go ahead and reverse this position on the X to make it go to the other side. There we go. Let's select our two animations and disable the loop time. And if we have a look inside of our crossfade animator controller, you can see that these two clips have now been added. And instead of making this animator more complicated, let's just remove these. And what we can then do is we can simply create a controller override. So in here, we'll right click, go create, and we'll select an animator override controller. Let's call this one circle wipe. And what this allows us to do is reference our original crossfade controller and simply change the two animation clips. So this is going to have the exact same structure as our old animator controller, but simply with other clips. So we can take our circle wipe end and put that in place of the crossfade end and do the same thing with the start. And now if we go to circle wipe here and reference this circle wipe controller instead, and also go to our level loader and drag in our circle wipe instead of the crossfade. Well, then we've actually created a whole new transition just like that. And if we save this now and hit play, we can see this animation playing really, really smoothly. Awesome. In fact, you don't have to just use very, very simple elements like I'm doing here. You can add any kind of flavor to your game using some of these transitions. Let me just demonstrate this by creating a brachies wipe using these exact same steps. So as you can see, I've simply created these two right and left images that we can now animate individually, as well as adding in the Brachys logo. So I'm just gonna quickly animate these. And once you've created one of the animations, in order to reverse all of these different keyframes, simply select all of them, hitting Control A and Control C to copy. Let's create the other animation and let's paste them in. However, this time, in order to reverse this, let's simply zoom out. And this animation is one second long, so I'm gonna drag on the bar here at the left and simply drag it over to the two second mark, and that has now reversed the entire animation. Really, really cool. And finally, once this transition is all set up, we can go to a level loader and simply drag that in instead. If we go ahead and play, we can see right away the animation plays perfectly. Woohoo! That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Now these transitions are pretty quick, but if you're working on a larger game, I recommend starting to load the game in the background while the transition is playing. This is called asynchronous loading, and with it you can add another part to your animation in the middle with just some kind of loading screen. Luckily we have a video already on adding a loading bar, but you can easily use the same technique without displaying the loading bar itself. So definitely check that out. I would also recommend that you turn the script into a single ton so that you can easily load a new level without having to reference it. I'll of course have a link to where you can learn more about singletons in the description. Also, don't forget to check out Hostinger for fast web hosting solutions. Simply click the link in the description and get 91% off yearly web hosting plans using the code BRACKIES. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in December and a special thanks to Lost of Islands, Love Forever, Samuel, Vili Vietanen, Chris, Faisal Marify, Megan Frasia, Dario Visaggio, Leo Lisette, Daniel Dusanik, Jacob Sanford, Mark Antoine Girard, Gregory Pierce, Naoki Wasaki, The Mighty Seuss, Addison the Fierce, Yijit Kaya, and Erasmus. You guys rock.